Uh, Phil, I, it was certainly the case. This is, this is a very deep crisis. Yeah, um, but just going again, we have can't avoid the bloody history. It, the the, the uh, revolutionary periods have taken place um, in uh, the latter stages of the First World War, in the recent past, in the last stage of the First World War, in the last stage of the Second World War. On the other hand, the crisis of uh, 2933 produced uh, the far right. Yeah. Um, interestingly, in relation to the, the point that John made about um, the uh, the left seeing uh, the, the influenza pandemic as radicalizing. Um, I, I've recently seen a piece of uh, academic paper produced, I, I can't remember who it was, uh, where the people had run a correlation against between the casualties in the influenza pandemic in Germany and the subsequent voting behavior. It turned out that high casualties in the influenza pandemic were correlated with uh, Nazi voting in voting for the far right in the 1920s and in the early 1930s. Um, I suspect that probably the reason for that was because they were also correlated with low expenditure on public works and public benefits so that you're probably actually talking about backward rural areas to start with but I'm not I'm not certain about that at all. Um, a year ago, you couldn't talk socialism, the interest in socialism. That's absolutely true. The interest in socialism is developing. Having said that, we have just seen a big, huge mass movement around the, just the, the, the accidental fact that Jeremy Corbyn got on the Labour leadership ballot and it's evaporated, in effect. It's evaporated. Um, and it's evaporated because. Um, the interventions of the existing organized left you can't leap over the heads of the existing organized left because they're there and they intervene and in this case the existing organized left by their organizational methods in momentum and in other labor left formations have poisoned the mass movement which did happen there was a mass movement around corpin it's real Lots of people moved into the Labour Party, but the upshot of that has been to deliver that. Uh, so the ones who survive, who haven't uh, become uh, uh, demoralised and dropped out altogether, to the uh, Labour right. In the same way, actually, I think the Sanders movement, very difficult to tell, but it looks as though, to a considerable extent, the Sanders movement is delivering votes to the Democratic Party rather than uh, to a... Um, a, 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 a an independently um, socialist project. Phil also made the point we need a Marshall Plan. Actually, it wasn't the Marshall Plan, uh, in its, the Marshall Plan helped, but what the key was that the United States, because of the Soviet tanks on the Elbe and mass communist parties in um, uh, Western Southern Europe, uh, the United States agreed to concede uh, massive debt relief and something like all the, in the period 1947-50, something like half of all global state debts were defaulted. Yeah. Uh, FX, the Chinese debt, with pre-revolutionary pre Chinese debt was defaulted by the Chinese revolution. The East European debts were defaulted by the uh, 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 Russian takeovers in the various countries, but also actually Germany was released from its post-war debt. It's a point which the Greeks have made repeatedly about the fact that the Germans are unwilling to accept debt relief of debts owed to them. Yeah. The United Kingdom was allowed very soft terms for gradual repayment, which was happened finished in the 1990s, I think. It may have been even under the Blair administration that the UK won, finished paying off the US debt. Um, so this debt relief enables recovery as long as the debt is overhung. So in that sense, defaults could, mass defaults could enable the recovery. Coordinated action to default the debt owed to the uh, uh, financial system 
uh, could enable recovery, but uh, um, that's a, a separate issue. Um, uh, 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 Jim, I was just making the point which I've made that actually I don't, yeah, I agree. I don't think that this, the, the lockdown will for a long period of time will be sustainable. Um, even if the government hadn't sort of already said, oh, started giving out contradictory messages. So once the government started giving out contradictory messages, it's getting very difficult to hold them. Uh, Carol and John also, John talked about wildcats. We have got wildcats in this country as well as in the States. It is, it's, it's, it's a mistake to imagine that you can leap straight from wildcats to, uh, wildcats leads to Soviets workers' councils and workers' councils uh, leads you to power. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's a mistake is because the difference between Russia and uh, Western Europe is that there were workers' councils all over Western Europe, but all they were was organizing committees for wildcats and the uh, massive social democratic right wing social democrats, the majority social democrats, the right wing in Germany controlled the um, uh, workers' councils in Austria, the workers' councils seized the factories and uh, went to the Austrian Social Democratic leadership and said, now comrades, we want you to tell us what plans to make. And uh, uh, the Austrian Social Democratic leaders said to the work leaders of the workers' councils, no, you have to uh, give the factories back to the bosses because uh, if we try and seize power, uh, we will be uh, crushed by the Italian army. Of course, the Italian army was in process of falling apart. Yeah, but the the point that you can't, you have to build, John's point, you have to build mass parties. The reason why you have to build mass parties is because we actually get mass movements as opposed to a strike here and a strike there and a wildcat here and a wildcat there. Uh, you, uh, the, the, the existing organized forces uh, come in on them and uh, affect them. Um, Working from home, I'm working from home. I, 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 I agree that it's uh, more problematic to organize uh, solidarity for action when you're working from home. I'm, it's easy and stuff like that. Having said that, um, before in Peter Leinbaugh's book, The London Hanged, is about the conduct of the class struggle in the period before the factory when uh, most work was being done in, from people's homes in the form of putting out of industrial work that people had a loom in their front room or uh, the poor buggers who had to work uh, with mercury silver plating buttons um, uh, or with hat making hats and stuff, the Mad Hatter because they had to work with mercury making hats. Um, and they found ways of conducting the class struggle different ways to the ways we have had the, 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 the strike action in the modern sense. They, had, they did have strike actions. There's um, a whole lot of anti-strike law, starting with the Confederacies of Masons Act 1425, going on through that stuff. But before the factory, the capitalists moved into the factory, as Lineball shows, because it was easier to manage uh, the class struggle than it had been uh, when uh, people were working in their homes and holding meetings in pubs and uh, sending threatening letters and breaking machines and burning things down and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not going to say you can't have, I don't think the uh, working from home stuff prevents automatically there being class struggle with people working from home. Um, and uh, oh, sorry, let me, where am I? That's confirming agreeing with uh, what uh, Jack said. Um, and uh, and Sarah's point also in relation to Jack Priest's point about that it, there, it's true that you can't uh, 
talk the staff about this it's now more or less impossible for people to defend the stuff of the hands off the free market will sort it out it's unproblematic now it's bloody obvious that there are a lot of things which the free market can't sort out first off second secondly it's bloody obvious that uh, efficiency gains that the difficult a lot of the difficulty which we come from arises from just in time management and from efficiency gains the functioning of the economy of an economy uh, needs to make allowance for uh, crises, it makes allowance for external emergencies. That implies actually um, having more capa spare capacity, over capacity, standing over capacity, kept running. Uh, the problem, half of the problem with the NHS was they'd increased the bed occupancy rate through efficiency gains too high for the to be leeway for handling an epidemic um, but the flip side of this is as i said i said right at the beginning um, states the gap it, it's 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 an ideology uh, uh, liberalism is an ideology it's one side of um, capitalist politics which is the side which appears in the form of market exchange the other side of capitalist politics is the side which appears in the form of the authority relations in the factory and that side is collectivist all right but it's collectivist on the basis of you will bloody knuckle under and uh, the state uh, will provide and that we swing to and fro uh, between uh, uh, liberalism on the one hand and uh, uh, conservative nationalism, whether that can, that conservative nationalism can take the form of religious politics, it can take the form of straight nationalism. Um, sometimes it can call itself socialist, as the national, German National Socialist Party did, and as actually quite a lot of the uh, quite rightist. Um, uh, military Bonapartist regimes in Latin America in the 30s through the 60s did. Um, but nonetheless, it's still actually we're talking about the state. The collective action is not the collective action of uh, uh, the uh, association, co -op, Republican and beneficent situation system of the association of free and equal producers. It's the army and the police reshaping the society in their own image and that's collectivist all right but at the same time it's a it's not the particular sort of collectivism uh, which is our um, interest and i go back to the question of party and in a sense actually back it jumped right all the way back to the question of transitional method transitional program blah 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 it's a comment it's a very odd thing because there's a comment which trotsky uh made and other people made at the same time actually uh, at the time of the russian civil war and shortly afterwards um, uh, that it had been very difficult very easy sorry relatively easy for the russian bolsheviks to take power because what they confronted was a collapsing feudal state with a very weak bourgeoisie uh, in the midst of a world war where uh, the whole the articulation of the world system was in difficulty but it was going to be bloody difficult really extremely difficult for them to hold power and hence, and this is Gramsci, God help us, it's what's been made of Gramsci on this point, but it's Trotsky before it was Gramsci. Uh, we need to think of uh, the East as having, in a sense, a war of motion, and the West as having, in a sense, a war of position, because there are fortifications, it's siege warfare. The capitalist state has fortifications and outworks. There is not just the curtain wall but the bastion sticking out from the curtain wall and in front of the bastions are counter scarps and in front of the counter scarps are ravelins yeah. but then the question is what are these fortifications the answer is that the outworks and fortifications of the capitalist state are in the bastions and uh, 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 counter scarps the labor bureaucracy 
the labor organizations controlled by people who are loyal to the capitalist constitution. And these are mass organizations yeah, which propagate loyalty to the constitution. The, out, the, the, the ravelins, one step further out, is the left which is attached to um, copying the managerialist techniques of the labor bureaucracy. And there's a sense in which um, we are unlikely to succeed in taking the curtain wall by storm without uh, overthrowing at least some of the outworks. Yeah. Uh, it's the, uh, uh, the, 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 the idea of the transitional program had two aspects, well, it had three aspects to it. It had, the first off was that uh, uh, Nikolai Bukharin argued that you could get rid of the minimum program. And Lenin argued against that. There was a fight at the Fourth Congress of the Communist International. Uh, there was a fight within the Russian delegation about this question with the Russian delegation being split. And talk, writing down the idea of a transitional program was a um, uh, fudge to uh, uh, overcome the problem of the fight between Lenin and Bukharin about whether it was necessary for the Comintern to have a minimum program. Uh, the second, however, was that the core demands, the demand for uh, sliding scale of wages and sliding scale of hours, were responses to German politics in the latter period of the First World War, because the Germans didn't introduce full rationing. Uh, there was very severe inflation and considerable unemployment as the uh, economy dislocated the war. And um, the, the idea of sliding scale of wages then comes in and is uh, a, a, as a solution to this problem and is reinvented in the context of 1923 and the hyperinflation and unemployment of, of that period. And it seemed to be that the Second World War would be like the first. It seemed, it seemed to lots of people, everybody thought the Second World War would be like the first. Leon Trotsky included. Yeah. Uh, and so then we have this program, which is generals fighting the last war. The, this is a, an Im imagined idea for how to win in the conditions of 1917-18 in Germany. It's not a Russian politics. It's uh, it's addressed to the German politics of and the French politics as well, actually in different, slightly different forms of 1917-18-19. Uh, but it didn't work out like that because it, once war broke out in 1939, everybody, all the belligerents immediately adopted uh, rationing and centralized directive planning. And hence the, the, the economics didn't do anything. The same is actually true in a sense in the present state, precisely because we're in a situation where the state is managing everything, it doesn't, the, the, social, the, the presentation of socialism as we want more state management uh, doesn't work. What we want is um, working class political power, working class democratic self-management, access to the information which will allow us to do that sort of democratic self-management. Hence, yes, it's a good idea to call for access to the information and for uh, mass testing to give us the information and so on. But uh, it's 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 not a transitional, not a transitional method or a transitional program. It's how do we approach uh, the question of the working class? It's not that we don't pose the question of power because we're not at present. We're, we're posing the question of power by saying the working class needs to take political power through democrat political political democracy. That's not the same as saying right now we can leap from unofficial strikes to Soviets and from Soviets to power. That doesn't work. But uh, we can pose the question of political power through posing the question of political democracy, which takes us back, I guess, to Yasmin's uh, original question about democracy and transparency. That's it. Thanks very much, Mike. 
um, apologies for the interruptions. Um, Stan, do you want to make your announcement? I can't see any other questions, so we are considering this the end of this discussion, unless, Mike, you want to summarise again. If you have oh, that's what I've just been doing. Yeah. Sorry, I assumed yeah. that we were over. Yeah. yeah. Stan, your announcement, or if you want to go ahead, 